Hey y'all, thanks for joining me as we continue our look at what it means to be a Presbyterian. We're looking at the doctrine from the, our denomination, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, what we call the essentials of our faith, and we've reached uh, the point where we're talking about the church. And so this is what our statement says. The true church. Now, by the way, defining church is an interesting thing here uh, because we do have this thing called the visible church and the invisible church. Very quick definition. Visible church is all of those who are physically present or part of a local congregation or, or you know, all of those gatherings of church. Invisible church is all of those who are truly members of the church because every now and then we get people who are attending our churches on a regular basis who are not eternally saved and that's just that's just the nature of how things are uh, again we probably see that you've probably seen people that you feel like have fallen away uh, and anyway that's the nature of, of the church visible and invisible again not enough time to get into that right now but just know that that's out there to, as a thought to think about the true church is composed of all persons who through saving faith in Jesus Christ and the sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit are united together in the body of Christ. This is a huge concept. We are united to Christ. We have union with Christ. That means we are a part of his body. Uh, and, and that's one of the things, if we have a true understanding of that, we would not only recognize that we're united with Christ, we're united to each other. And therefore, we owe it to each other to hold each other accountable, to strengthen one another, uh, to pray for one another, all of these different things. Uh, very, very vital concept for us to understand. Again, not enough time in this format to go through that point completely, but just know that you are united by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. The church finds her visible yet imperfect expression in local congregations where the word of God is preached in its purity and the sacraments are administered in their integrity, where scriptural discipline is practiced and where loving fellowship is maintained. For her perfecting, she awaits the return of the Lord. So, again, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, what you see at Hope Presbyterian Church, uh, Monday through Sunday, uh, going through the people who are coming in for Sunday services, or Bible studies, or whatever else, that's the visible church. That's everybody who's attending Hope Pres. And there may be other, there are certainly other churches out there as well. And we get together, uh, and but we are imperfect. That's a key word. On this side of glory, of the second coming, we are going to be imperfect. We're not always going to get it right. And that's okay, because we also believe, and we're Presbyterian, we should always be constantly reforming, re-challenging, you know, thinking through why we do certain things. And really and truly, if you're still doing something the same way 20 years later, you might want to think about that. <laughs> that's a whole other subject. Uh, but, uh, the ch you know, imperfect expression in local congregations where the Word of God is preached. The Word of God being preached is of vital importance to the local congregation. Uh, the message has to get out. It has to be preached. And you know what? Um, it, it, it is a wonderful thing that we have men and women who are dedicated to teaching scriptural truths in the church, whether from the pulpit or in Bible studies, whatever it happens to be, we are teaching biblical truth. This is absolutely vital to be done. Uh, sacraments are administered. I will tell you this much, and um, we're going to talk about the sacraments uh, a little bit more down the line. Uh, I will tell you this much, uh, we could do the sacraments a whole lot better, not just at Hope, but in general in American uh, theology and, and practice. We sometimes just kind of think of our, the sacraments as just something that we do uh, maybe every month uh, if we're talking about the Lord's Supper or it's just a, you know this weird event that we do where we take a baby and pour water on them uh, for baptism. Um, but there are some deeply deeply meaningful things uh, within our sacramental system that we need to be thinking about and, and, and expressing and doing. Uh, 
scriptural discipline is practiced. This means that, again, we are accountable to one another and that we are willing to confront others when there's wrong. This is what Matthew 18 is all about. And it's not just for grievous sin. It's for maybe a little bit of error here or there uh, or, or maybe just, you know, general, hey, I really need to talk to you about whatever's something going on in your life or a way that you behave or whatever that may not necessarily be sinful but could certainly be better. But the key to doing Matthew 18 about confronting someone about their sin or something like that is that you're using Matthew 7 and you're self-examining before you go and you bring up, the, try to remove the speck from their eye, you remove the log from your own. That's Matthew 7. So discipline is, is very, very important. Where loving fellowship is maintained. This means that we are loving one another, that we are loving those around us, that we're loving the ones that look like us and think like us, and those who may not look like us and think like us. And that's okay uh, that we have the ability to fellowship with one another, and in the essentials, we are united. In the non-essentials, uh, we are you know, we have liberty to have differences of opinion. But in all things that we have charity. It's a key thing. And then this last part, for her perfecting, she awaits the return of the Lord. We truly believe in the second coming of the Lord. This is something, again, we'll discuss uh, later on. But we do believe that Jesus is coming again. We have no idea when. And that's okay. That's fine. Uh, I, I, again, I appreciate you guys. This one's a little bit longer just because of the length of the, of the passage. Uh, I hope that you will continue to look these things over, study them from your, for yourselves, and feel free. would love for you to contact me and ask me any questions that you may have. Anyway, hope you guys have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you later. Bye.